Hey everyone, this is Josh with a fun cryptography tutorial for you today. We're going to be talking about the magic of the one-time pad, a fundamental concept in cryptography that spans both classical and modern uh, cryptography concepts. The one-time pad is something that's been used throughout history and can also be implemented on computers for the need of perfect secrecy. They're a really interesting and very simple cipher, but also impractical for most day-to-day -day uses. So let's dive into what the one-time pad is, how it's constructed, and some practical pitfalls to using them. So first, the properties of the one-time pad. A one-time pad simply is a cipher where you have a plain text and you have an exactly equal length key uh, that gives you the ciphertext. So if you have a 19 byte plain text, you must have an exactly 19 byte uh, key. The second property of the one time pad is that the key must be truly random, not just pseudo random. And the key must only be used once to encrypt some information, hence one time pad. As we'll talk about later, reusing the key uh, for a one-time pad breaks the cipher completely. So how does the one-time pad work? Again, this is a very simple cipher. In a computer, you only need the bitwise OR instruction to make a one-time pad work. So you take each byte, uh, or each bit rather, and do a binary XOR operation of the plain text and the key to give your ciphertext. So let, let's say, for example, we have this byte here, 01100011 as our plain text, and that's encoding some uh, information, maybe like a character of our message. We take our truly random key, 00011001, and we do a bitwise XOR. So we get a ciphertext of 01111. 0, 1, 0. If you're not familiar with uh, bitwise operations, there's some other great tutorials out there you can take a look at to understand this concept better. And it's fairly straightforward. So there's other ways to do this uh, without a computer. You know, in uh, World War II, for example, or World War I, uh, other classical examples of the one-time pad used in intelligence, you can use an alphabet and some modular arithmetic, which I'm not demonstrating here. But either way, the one-time pad is fairly simple to implement, but it's not without its pitfalls. So let's talk about the concept of perfect secrecy. This is what can make the one-time pad so powerful, uh, but also makes it very difficult to implement correctly. Perfect secrecy is the idea that, in theory, a properly constructed one-time pad is impossible to crack. There are other modern ciphers, such as AES and strong ciphers, that have theoretical attacks that are impractical, which is why we use them for day-to-day -day use. In theory, the one-time pad is sort of the opposite. Uh, if it is properly constructed, it is impossible to crack in, in a uh, in information theoretical way. Um, however, it's not always easy to get this right, as we'll see. The reason for this perfect secrecy of a properly constructed one-time pad is that all possible keys give all possible plain texts. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you had a ciphertext from somebody. You had an encrypted message that was done using a one-time pad, and you wanted to try and brute force all the possible keys. Now, let's say this message is short. Let's say 19 bytes or 19 ASCII characters. This is certainly something where you could try all candidate keys using a modern computer very, very quickly. Well, how do you know which plain text is correct, which one is the actual um, correct uh, decrypted message that you want to try to get. Well, with a one-time pad, if the key is truly random, there's no way to know. Let's say, for example, I wanted to encrypt the message 
cryptography is fun using a one-time pad. There is some 19-byte key that matches the length of this message that gives this random-looking string starting with Z here, you know, Z-X-E-A-M. It's just gibberish, right? That could be my, um, you know, possible plain text that somebody would try. Now, if somebody tries one of the possible keys and gets this back, they would probably guess that that's not the plain text, right? I probably wasn't trying to encrypt some garbage. However, there's also a key that they could try that gives the message cryptography stinks. So you could have a key that gives Bitcoin donkey mod, which is also a 19 character message. If you're the attacker, and you're trying all these candidate keys and you get back all these possible 19 character messages, there is no way for you to tell which one was actually my original message, my intended plain text. I know the real message is cryptography is fun. And the person that I shared the correct key with also knows that cryptography is fun is the decrypted message. But for an attacker trying all possible keys, they have no way of knowing if the plain text was cryptography is fun, a random string of gibberish, or Bitcoin donkey mud. So that's this idea of perfect secrecy. Now this sounds great. And in some cases like intelligence uses, or maybe you have some short super secret message that you really know what you're doing and you wanna keep this secret. You know, you may be able to use a one-time pad for that. However, there's a lot of practical pitfalls to one-time pads, and there's a reason that we don't use them to encrypt our computer hard drives or our uh, you know, messages that we want to share with people over email and that sort of thing. It's fairly simple to break a one-time pad if it is not done correctly. And for one of those things, one of those properties that we talked about earlier, the one-time pad must only be used once. There is a simple property of this XOR operation uh, that it turns out if you reuse the key and you have two different ciphertexts for two different plain texts, you can XOR those together and leak information about what the original plain texts were. This property is that the first ciphertext, so your first encrypted message, XORed with your second ciphertext gives the first plain text XOR with the second plain text. So the things will still be scrambled a little bit, but you will be leaking information about your um, plain text if you reuse the key. So you lose that property of perfect secrecy in a way that's pretty profound. Uh, one of the best ways to see an example of this is to look up, you know, breaking a one time pad key reuse. And people have um, done this with, you know, bitmap images that kind of show how it leaks information about uh, both of the plain texts. So the one-time pad is also rather impractical. And, and one of the reasons for that is simply the keys become very, very unwieldy very quickly. If we only want to encrypt a 19-byte character stream, we only need a 19-byte key. And that's a very, very small amount of data. But think about if you wanted to encrypt the contents of your entire computer hard drive. You know, that is something that you should do for security reasons. If you lose your laptop, you don't want somebody be, to be able to access your documents by pulling out the hard drive and plugging it into another PC. But we need to use modern ciphers for that, like AES, because if you wanted to encrypt the entire contents of your hard drive using a one-time pad, you'd have to have a second hard drive of the exact same size just to store the key. So a two terabyte drive would need a two terabyte key. That's a lot of data to have to carry around, twice the storage to pay for. Not only that, but you could never modify the contents of your hard drive. You would only maybe consider using a one-time pad if you had something super secret that you wanted to never change and keep safe. Uh, because if you were to change the contents of your hard drive and reuse the same key on that other hard drive, you would run into this problem that we just discussed with breaking the one-time pad, where you would start leaking information about the actual contents of your hard drive. So one-time pads are a really interesting construction, and they're very powerful, and it's certainly a fundamental concept in cryptography that everybody that's interested in it 
should understand. However, they're not practical for day-to-day -day use. So we use other modern cryptography on our computers, things like ECDSA, RSA, PGP, which is, you know, uses some of those underlying concepts, AES for symmetric encryption, all sorts of other powerful ciphers that are practical to use and in a practical sense are impossible to crack when they're done correctly. So I hope you found this tutorial on one-time pads and cryptography interesting. If you're interested in learning more about cryptography, check out some of my other videos. I have a lot of great content on security, cryptography, cryptocurrencies, and other computer science concepts. As always, thanks for learning something new with me today.